to another episode of Talking Politics here at the Hindu with me, Nistula Hebbar, where we unpack the news making the headlines in domestic politics. Last week saw Rajya Sabha nominations being filed for the biennial polls for the upper house of parliament. These are 57 seats across 15 states and this has set the stage for an exciting polling day on June 10th in at least four states, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Haryana and Karnataka. In Maharashtra and Karnataka, the BJP has fielded extra candidates to clear the Congress's pitch and as well as that of the Janata Dal S in Karnataka. In Rajasthan and Haryana, media barons Subhash Chandra and Kartike Sharma have thrown their hats in the ring uh, as candidates backed by the BJP, as independent candidates backed by the BJP and their allies in those states. Now, this has created a difficult situation from the, for the Congress and it makes for an interesting face-off and will be the big political event for next uh, for uh, the coming week in kashmir uh, targeted killings of civilians many of them minority hindus has created an uproar with the kashmiri pandit community in the valley and they are again set to move out of the area after the first kashmiri pandit exodus of the 1990s it's a difficult challenge for the government and they will have to really work hard on how to deal with it be creative in their solutions but that is not what we will be talking about in this episode of Talking Politics. On Thursday, June 2nd, RSS Chief Dr. Mohan Bhagwat made an important speech with regard to the Gyan Bapi Mosque controversy, a mosque that is cheek by jowl uh, with the Kashi Vishwanath Temple complex, and which many believe uh, was part of the original temple complex and was destroyed by Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb and turned into a mosque. There are a lot of religious sentiments attached to this entire complex. What was uh, Mohan Bhagwat's speech all about? What does it say about the thinking of the Sangh Parivar, that is RSS and its uh, ideological affiliates on this issue? Uh, these are all the things that this episode of Talking Politics uh, will be looking at. The controversy over Gyanwapi is not new. At the height of the Ram Janmabhoomi temple movement, which was in the 1980s, 90s and even the early 2000s, uh, slogans were raised for the reclamation of Hindu sacred spaces in Kashi and from Mathura, where the Eidgar Ma Masjid is also cheek by jowl uh, with the Krishna Janmabhoomi temple. Um, as far back as 1959, the RSS had passed a resolution in one of its meetings uh, for such a reclamation and rejuvenation of places of worship held dear by Hindus. In the early 1980s, however, uh, the focus was all on Ayodhya and the Ram Janmabhoomi movement. This was uh, pushed by the Sangh, it was led by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad. And when uh, the RSS's political wing, which is the BJP, passed a resolution uh, in its Palampur uh, National Executive 1989 uh, that they would be extending support to that movement. Uh, the Ram Janmabhoomi issue was foregrounded in India's uh, uh, politics, post-independence politics and even electoral politics. It had a huge electoral impact as well on the fortunes of the BJP and contributed uh, uh, a huge lead to the position that BJP occupies now as the pole of Indian politics, as the main pole of Indian politics. Uh, well, Kashi and Mathura through all of this were mentioned in the same breath but were not part of that particular movement. This did not stop, of course, various legal suits being brought over the issue because a lot of uh, people who had sympathies with the sun felt that um, legal recourse at least can be taken even if politically that issue is not being pushed. As of now, there are 10 pending matters in various courts. Eight matters are pending before lower courts in Varanasi, uh, seven of them before the civil, court, uh, civil judge and one before the district judge. These have all been filed as of last year while the Allahabad High Court is hearing another matter filed in 1991. Now, how did the current controversy arise? Because, uh, a law, as I said, uh, a case has been going on since 1991. Well, uh, five Hindu women, five women from the Hindu community, uh, they filed a suit last year before the civil judge, senior division, Varanasi, for a declaration of their right to worship deities, visible and invisible, inside the Gyan Bapi Mosque premises. Uh, the civil judge ordered an advocate commission to conduct a survey uh, of the premises, a videographic survey of the premises in a series of orders. 
The mosque's caretakers, alarmed by this, approached the Allahabad High Court, who refused to interfere. The High Court said that the orders of the civil judge for a commission survey were innocuous. The caretakers then moved the Supreme Court in appeal. While the Supreme Court was seized of the appeal, the commission went ahead and did the survey. This is in early May. The Hindu plaintiffs, uh, uh, when the commission kind of did the survey, the Hindu plaintiffs unilaterally filed an application before the civil judge and they said that the survey had shown that there was a shivering uh, uh, on the mosque's premises and the survey had very conclusively demonstrated that. They asked the court, therefore, to seal off the premises. It, you know, it's very obvious that the deity has been found and that place should be sealed off. The civil judge sealed off a portion of the premises and uh, basically deployed a lot of police presence and barricades there. The mosque's caretakers informed the Supreme Court of the development of the bench led by J. Chandrachur, Justice Chandrachur, in a balancing act, ordered the securing of the place where the uh, shivling uh, or reported shivling was found, but allowed the Muslims to offer namaz at the mosque despite reservations expressed by the UP government that this would create a law and order problem for them. Um, meanwhile, the commission uh, submitted its report uh, amidst controversy that uh, somebody there had allowed it to leak to the media and the civil judge therefore removed one of the advocate commissioners. The case came up again in the Supreme Court and the caretakers of the mosque uh, sought the quashing of the civil judge's orders and the commission's report and the, the survey report and they argued that the changed status quo regarding the mosque uh, 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 would fester and destroy communal harmony across the country. The Supreme Court uh, then made an oral comment in court that a mere ascertainment of the religious character of a place is not barred under the Places of Worship Act 1991. The Places of Worship Act 1991 was basically passed that um, uh, status quo of India's religious uh, sites would be maintained as per 1947, as they were found in 1947, with the exception of the Ram Bhumi, which was uh, sub at that time in court. Uh, all of these other um, places of worship would remain as they were found in 1947. But the just, uh, Justice Chandrachu ruled that uh, that uh, doing the survey was not in any way abrogating uh, that particular bill or act. The court, however, then transferred the case from the Varanasi civil judge to the Varanasi district judge and said again that the area where the reported shivling had been found, that could be basically protected uh, while allowing Muslims to offer namaz uh, in the uh, mosque as such. Now we come to uh, what RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat's speech uh, actually uh, was about. Uh, this basically the speech was uh, made uh, during the conclusion of the Trithiya Varg or the third year training program of the RSS uh, concluded in Nagpur. It had happened after two years, two years of COVID. They didn't have any of their training programs, their Vargs. And um, uh, this particular work after two years was considered important. Uh, Dr. Mohan Bhagwat specifically referred to the Gyanvapi issue in his speech. Now I'm opening quotes, I'm quoting him directly. He said, Gyanvapi matter is ongoing. We can't change history. Neither today's Hindus nor today's Muslims have created this issue. It happened at that time in the past. Islam came from outside by invaders in the attacks by these invaders devasthanas devasthans were demolished to exhaust the morale of those who wanted india's independence he said he added significantly again i'm quoting we have a special devotion towards certain places and we speak about them but we shouldn't bring out a new matter daily right? he, he looks he's basically telling uh, followers of the sun uh, not to keep pushing uh, at uh, scabs over the boom on, uh, you know, uh, basically on the fault lines of communal uh, lines. We have a devotion towards Gyan Bapi, he said, and doing something as per that, it's all right. I think here is a reference to the legal uh, challenges, which he feels is all right. But why look for a shivling in every masjid? This is again a reaction to a spate of such issues that have been raised in the past some are saying that Vishnu temples exist at the site of the Qutub Minar and they should be restored and the character of the Qutub Minar monument should be changed. 
Uh, some are saying that uh, there are temples beneath the Taj Mahal, etc. So I think this is in response to uh, that uh, trend that has suddenly been seen. He asked that a path of mutual dialogue or legal recourse via courts should be taken. He specified that since the Ram Janmabhoomi movement, the RSS had not moved to support any other such movement. Again, I'm quoting him. We had said on November 9th, November 9th is when the, uh, I think the verdict came out on uh, the Ram Janmabhoomi issue, well, the Supreme Court verdict, verdict, that there was a Ram Janmabhoomi movement in which we participated against our nature due to certain circumstances and completed that work. Now we don't have to do any such movements. Basically, he's drawn a red line that there will be, at least not from the side, there will not be any large scale mobilization of people as was seen under the Ram Janmabhoomi movement for Gyan Bapi. This follows what BJP President J.P. Nanda had said on Monday when he had held his press conference, that's May 30th, that the courts and constitution were to be the guides uh, for the resolution of the Gyan Bapi issue. Now, what are the implications? Again, I've mentioned a few of the implications, but what are the larger implications of these statements? According to those in the know, Sang Parivar through its political wing, the BJP's, two back-to-back -back full majority governments feels that it has managed to create uh, what they call a Hindu-minded atmosphere where even opposition leaders are compelled to chant the Chandi part and observe other declarative Hindu rituals where they did not do so in the past. In such a situation, there seems to be no point in creating a hugely polarizing situation which would continue to push minority communities to block voting patterns mobilized against the BJP. Being in power, it would appear a bullying behavior which would be unseemly as well. The Sang's top office bearers uh, are regularly in touch with leaders of minority groups and while no one is under any illusion that this will alter voting or support patterns in the short run, to polarize sharply would be counterproductive is the thought that is going on in the Sang Parivar. While all of this is, of course, good news for those who advocate less polarization and division in society, especially over religious identity, always a powder keg uh, issue in India, the biggest challenge for the RSS leadership would be to make this decision acceptable to its larger family and fringe, its own uh, larger family and fringe rather than the rest of the people. Only time will tell whether the RSS is able to do that or whether the genie is already out of the bottle. That's all I have for you this week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.